TCU at West Virginia. This game's at noon ESPN. West Virginia's seven and a half point home dog over under 68 and a half. My, you know, my thoughts on Oklahoma state and TCU and they're in the same exact spot going off the, on the road have to be exhausted. So TCU played their rival SMU and then they played four consecutive ranked conference opponents, Oklahoma, Oklahoma state, Kansas, and Kansas state. They had a stage comebacks in each of the past three, one possession victories. Meanwhile, I mean, West Virginia had a, uh, only has only played once since October 13th. TCU's played every week, six straight week, their rival SMU on the road, four straight conference ranked opponents. And by the way, all four terrible defenses, just like West Virginia, um, besides Kansas State. And quarterback, They all, all TCU does is get backup quarterbacks. They knocked out Dylan Gabriel in the first half, knocked out Jalen Daniels, knocked out Adrian Martinez, then knocked out Will Howard. At one point, you know, Kansas State went to their third string and threw a pick. The only starting quarterback to finish a game over that stretch was Spencer Sanders, who was clearly hurt in the second half. So I think that TCU's defensive numbers, which aren't good, are even worse than they because of all the backup quarterbacks that they've gotten to face during games, which is even better than facing them, you know, when the backup quarterback knows and you can practice with the ones and prepare for the backup. So I think this TCU defense is exhausted, is vulnerable, and – their pass defense in particular can be exploited and that's all West Virginia does is throw the ball at home here and look even with all those breaks they're still 93rd in EPA per pass the TCU defense so and look for what it's worth Sonny Dykes when ranked one in 10 against the spread on the road against an unranked conference opponent he is the least profitable coach in that scenario over the past 30 years one in 10 against the spread so, yeah, I – look, TCU might be running on empty. I mean, last week they came out a little flat against Kansas State. They were down 18, and then you get all the backup quarterbacks. Your adrenaline goes. They start making the comeback because Kansas State can't do anything. Now you got to get up again. This is 11 a.m. kick for their time in Morgantown. Great by low spot of West Virginia after getting embarrassed. I think that they can keep this at least within one possession. Should be a shootout. West Virginia's defense also stinks for what it's worth. They should not get many stops. Be similar to the Baylor game. I assume maybe you get, I think they're, they're going to win outright for what it's worth. I think they'll get like a turnover here or there. And uh, they're going to, you're going to get a good JT Daniels game. Give me West Virginia plus seven and a half. Uh, I'm against you. Uh, I, oh, I thought, oh, yeah. You're on TCU? Shocker. Yeah, shocker. Um, you know, really, I think if you've got a TCU 18 to one in your back pocket, you're not going to bet on this game. Uh, but I think I am going to bet on this game. The problem is I can't scoop one of these sevens. Every time I get a notification of sevens out there and I try to go grab it, it's gone. Uh, so I'm definitely not scooping seven and a half, but I think I'm going with you. I mean, more I dug into this game, listen, TCU has been really bad in the first halves. I don't know what's going on in the first half. 17 points in the first half against Kansas State. 13 first what's half. What's going on first half? Is that's when they face starting quarterbacks. And then the second <laughs> half against the first half. 13 first half. Easy. Against Oklahoma State, 10 first half points against Kansas. Uh, and, you know, I'm losing. I lost the first half bet on the BBOC show on Saturday because Kansas State went absolutely berserk in the first half. But, you know, once Joe Gillespie's been making his halftime adjustments, and, yes, there's been some, you know, uh, you know, some other quarterbacks come in. Uh, TCU, it's just been they've been routing these teams. And the key to beating TCU is establishing a good ground attack against a defense that is mid-FBS and rushing success rate and stuff rate. And, you know, TCU has given up more. Uh, Also, they're giving up explosive passes. They've given up more 20-yard pass plays than any team in the country, uh, almost any team in the country. They've given up 34 passes over 20 yards. The bottom of FBS is Vandy at 38, so they're not that far away from being Vanderbilt level. Now, why I'm fading West Virginia when I thought this was going to be the spot, you have to be able to run the ball against TCU. Lead running back Troy Mathis Jr., he's out for this game. Third string Justin Johnson Jr. with 55 rushing attempts is now questionable, likely not to play. CJ Donaldson returned as their workhorse, but he only had 12 carries last week, returning from an injury that kept him out for a couple of weeks. He just wasn't stellar, not the same guy that we saw at the beginning of the year. He had 2.8 yards after contact created, uh, and he created just one missed tackle, and he had one run over 10 yards last week against Texas Tech. It is a critical part for West Virginia to cover and win this game is to have an established ground game. So then you ask, does West Virginia have a shot in limiting the high-powered TCU attack? Neil Brown came out at his presser, and it's like, starting corner Rashad Ajayi, out. 
Weak side linebacker, Lace Dixon, out. JT Daniels had his worst game of the season, three interceptions all on him. Uh, he had his worst A dot of the season. He's not throwing it very deep. And those halftime changes that I mentioned about Gillespie, he's been sending heavy blitz from linebackers in the second half, and sometimes he's been sending them from the secondary. JT Daniels has one big-time throw and six turnover-worthy plays when he's been blitzed this year. Joseph Gillespie is going to be bringing the heat, and that has not been a good formula for JT Daniels so far. So I'm not running out to grab seven and a half, and I'm not running out to bet a whole ton of money because I have TCU 18 to one, but at TCU minus seven, I'm playing the frogs. Yeah, no, I mean, I, we'll see if they have the legs. I mean, this spot here is just so good for West Virginia. Yeah, and it is. I don't mind. I don't mind the running backs being hurt because West Virginia can't run the ball. Uh, they they are. If you look on offense, they're yeah. You know, what? Let's look at success rate. They're mid FBS average. Of the run EPA for rush average. EPA for pass. They are thirty fourth. Success rate on offense. They're nineteenth in when they pass the ball and. Like I said, TCU's defense, 98th EPA per pass, and they've played multiple backups and third stringers. JT, I want JT Daniels to cook here. And I don't I don't care who's out in the West Virginia defense. They're not getting any stops here. They got to cause a couple turnovers. <laughs> I'm not expecting any stops. Um, but I do expect TCU to come out a little flat here. West JT Daniels is going to have to be the blitz. JT Daniels is going to have to be the blitz because if you're just going to sell out and throw all the time, Gillespie's going to bring the heat. So it's, it's definitely an interesting battle. 